I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. Sarah, a university student with a penchant for the paranormal, had recently stumbled upon an online forum dedicated to urban legends and ghost stories. Among the various tales and games, one caught her attention, the elevator game. It was said to transport those brave enough to play it to another dimension, provided they followed the rules precisely. Intrigued and a little skeptical, Sarah decided to try the game one night in the tallest building on her campus, a rarely used library annex with an old, somewhat unreliable elevator. The building was usually deserted in the evenings, making it the perfect place for such an experiment. The game's rules were specific. She would need to visit several floors in a particular sequence, alone and without interruption. If at any point someone else entered the elevator, she would have to start over. The most crucial part of the game involved going to the fifth floor, where, supposedly, a woman might enter the elevator. She was not to look at or speak to the woman, as she was not what she seemed. On a quiet Thursday night, Sarah approached the annex with a mixture of excitement and nerves. She entered the building, the silence of the empty halls amplifying her solitary footsteps. The air felt cooler inside, and the weight of the building's solitude pressed against her as she called the elevator. Once inside, she took a deep breath and began the sequence. Fourth floor, second floor, sixth floor, and so on. The elevator obeyed her commands with mechanical whirs and jolts, moving between the floors with a steady rhythm. As she reached the fifth floor, her heart raced. The doors opened, but no one was there. Relief mixed with disappointment flooded her. Part of her had not believed the stories, yet the thrill of the supernatural had fueled her hope. She continued the sequence, first floor, then back to the fifth. This time, as the doors parted, her breath caught in her throat. A woman stood outside the elevator, staring blankly ahead. She stepped in as Sarah pressed herself against the wall, remembering the rules. She kept her eyes down, not daring to look at the woman directly, though she could see from her periphery that the woman remained facing forward, silent. The atmosphere inside the elevator grew oppressively dense, the air cooling further, filling with a charge that made the hairs on Sarah's neck stand. The elevator descended to the tenth floor, the final step. If the ritual had worked, the doors would open to a different world. As the elevator approached the 10th floor, Sarah felt a wave of dizziness wash over her. The numbers on the panel flickered unnaturally, a soft hum buzzing in the background, growing louder as they neared their destination. The doors opened slowly, revealing not the familiar hallway of the 10th floor, but a corridor veiled in a deep, impenetrable darkness. Heart pounding, Sarah stared into the void before her. The air felt thick charged with a palpable intensity that seemed to beckon her forward. The woman beside her moved for the first time, turning her head slowly towards Sarah. Her face, previously obscured, was unnaturally pale, her eyes devoid of color, hollow. You can step out, the woman's voice whispered, a sound like the rustling of dry leaves. See what lies beyond. Sarah's instinct screamed at her to refuse, to return to the safety of the familiar world she knew. But curiosity, that deep, unyielding curiosity that had brought her here, urged her forward. Trembling, she stepped out of the elevator into the darkness, the woman following close behind. As the elevator doors closed behind them, leaving a faint echo of their thud in the dense air, Sarah realized that the game she had thought of as just a legend might have been more real and terrifying than she had ever imagined. The story of Sarah and the elevator game was far from over. She now stood on the threshold of the unknown, with the very real possibility that she might never find her way back. As the elevator doors sealed shut behind her, Sarah felt a chill envelop the space, the darkness around her so absolute that it seemed to swallow the faint light spilling from the elevator's interior. She could barely see her own hands and the air felt thick and unmoving as if suspended in time. The woman's presence lingered just behind her, silent yet overwhelmingly oppressive. Sarah's heart raced with a mix of fear and adrenaline. She reached out, hoping to find a wall or something tangible to orient herself, but her hands grasped only cold, heavy air. The quiet was suffocating, broken only by her shallow breaths and the faint sound of the woman moving slightly behind her. Where am I? Sarah whispered, 
her voice barely audible in the dense air. Between, the woman responded, her voice echoing oddly, as if coming from all directions. The place between here and there, where few dare to tread. Sarah's mind reeled at the implications. The game, the ritual, had worked, but to what end? What was this place, and what did it hold? She remembered the rules, the stories from the forums, and the warnings. No one had mentioned what came after reaching the other dimension, only that the goal was to return. Determined to find a way back, Sarah asked, How do I go back? Please tell me. The woman remained silent for a moment, the pause stretching uncomfortably long. The way back is not the same for all, she finally said. For some, it is a path of realization. For others, a journey of darkness. For you, it must be a choice. Sarah felt the weight of her words, cryptic yet ominous. She needed more information, something concrete to grasp onto. What choice? Please, I just want to return to where I came from. You must walk, the woman instructed, her tone neutral. Walk forward until you find the light. But be wary, child. Not all lights lead out. Some lead further into darkness. With little else to go on, Sarah hesitated only briefly before stepping forward, her hands extended to fend off unseen obstacles. Each step felt heavy, the air resisting her movement as if pushing her back. The darkness seemed to pulsate with a life of its own, whispering at the edges of her mind. She walked for what felt like hours, her sense of time distorted. The silence was complete, isolating. Just as exhaustion began to set in, a dim light appeared in the distance, a beacon of hope. It flickered weakly, its pale glow barely penetrating the surrounding darkness. Sarah quickened her pace, drawn to the light with a desperate need. As she approached, however, she felt a growing sense of dread. The light, now clearer, revealed itself to be emanating from a single bare bulb hanging from an indistinct ceiling. Beneath it stood another door, identical to the one on the elevator she had left behind. Pausing, Sarah remembered the woman's warning about the lights. Was this the exit, or a trap, leading deeper into this nightmarish limbo? The urge to open the door and see what lay beyond battled with her fear of becoming further lost. The woman's voice echoed in her mind once more. Choose wisely, for not all escapes lead home. Now standing before the door, Sarah faced her choice. To open this door in hopes it led back to her world, or to continue searching in the darkness for another, possibly safer, light. The story of Sarah's journey through the shadowy dimension of the elevator game continued, each decision shaping the path that lay ahead, and the darkness around her seemed to watch, waiting for her choice. With her heart pounding in her chest, Sarah faced the door, her hand hesitating on the cold metal handle. The stark, flickering bulb above did little to reassure her, casting more shadows than light, each one seeming to dance and twist ominously around her. The woman's words echoed in her mind, a chilling reminder that her choice could have dire consequences. Taking a deep breath, Sarah resolved to trust her instincts. She decided not to open the door immediately, but to carefully observe her surroundings first. She walked around the perimeter of the small, illuminated area, her eyes scanning for any sign or clue that might indicate what lay beyond the door. Everything remained unnervingly still and silent, save for the occasional flicker of the light bulb that seemed to synchronize with the increasing rate of her heartbeat. The oppressive atmosphere of the place weighed heavily on her, the air thick and difficult to breathe. As she completed her circuit back to the door, she noticed a small inscription on the frame that she hadn't seen before. It was worn and difficult to read, but what she could make out sent a shiver down her spine. For those who dare to see the truth. This new discovery filled her with dread, yet it also ignited a fierce determination. Was this a warning or a clue? Perhaps it was both. Sarah's hand shook as she finally turned the doorknob, pushing the door open with a resigned force. As the door creaked open, a rush of cold air greeted her, carrying with it a faint, almost imperceptible whisper that seemed to say, Welcome. Before her lay a long corridor, dimly lit by sporadic bulbs hanging precariously from the ceiling, each section of the hallway bathed in deep shadows. Compelled by a mixture of fear and an unyielding need for answers, Sarah stepped forward into the corridor. The door behind her swung shut with a loud bang, the sound echoing ominously down the long hallway. She tried the handle, but it wouldn't budge. There was no going back now. With each step, the corridor seemed to stretch further and further, 
an endless path that toyed with her perception. The lights flickered more aggressively here, casting ghostly shadows that seemed to whisper and moan as she passed. The air grew colder, and a thin layer of frost began to form on the walls, the atmosphere becoming more hostile with every breath she took. Suddenly, the lights went out completely, plunging Sarah into darkness. Panic set in as she stood frozen, her breaths loud in the crushing silence. Then, slowly, one by one, the lights flickered back to life, but now they revealed a horrifying sight. The walls of the corridor were no longer bare but adorned with mirrors, each reflecting a distorted version of Sarah. As she looked into them, the reflections began to move independently, their expressions twisted in horror and pain. Each step she took was mirrored by her reflections, but with grotesque exaggerations of her movements. Realizing the corridor was manipulating her deepest fears, Sarah ran, her footsteps echoing madly as the reflections mimicked her terror. Each mirror she passed seemed to scream silently, their faces contorted in agony. At the end of the corridor, another door appeared, this one marked with a simple, terrifying phrase. The end is the beginning. With no other choice, Sarah threw open the door, stepping through into what she hoped was freedom. Instead, she found herself back in the elevator, the doors closing slowly as the familiar floors of her university library displayed on the panel. But something was wrong. The numbers were counting backward, descending into negatives she didn't know existed. As the elevator continued to descend, Sarah realized the horror wasn't over. It was just beginning again a loop of fear and madness from which there was no escape. The game had no end, and her torment was eternal, each round deeper and more terrifying than the last. The elevator game had claimed her, a permanent player in its endless cycles of fear. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video, 